How's everyone doing? Hope everyone is doing great. Happy Wednesday for those of you who have no idea what day it is. Welcome to another episode of Tell Me More with Tony Moore. I'm your host, Tony Moore. That's me. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm super excited to reconnect and catch up with uh, one of my favorite people in the world, uh, Miss Martha Madison. You guys know her from Days of Our Lives as Belle Black Brady which I'm going to assume that's her name now <laughs> on the show. Um, but she's a very dear friend. We met many moons ago, and um, she's been one of the biggest supporters of mine. And I truly appreciate that anytime I call her and say, hey, can you do this? She's always game for it. So we're going to catch up with her and talk to her, and let's get her on the line now. I mean, I feel like I should adjust this just a little bit. Just that. Hi, Jen. Let's see. Uh oh. Let's see. Let me find where Martha is. I know she's in here. Do do do. Hold up. Oh. Okay. She's got to come back in. Martha, come on back in, honey. All right. Great to see everyone here. Oh, there she is. Hold on. Go live with Martha. Go live. Okay. Oh, why does it say she's unable to join? Technology is something else. Uh, it never works when you need it to. Um, okay, I'm going to try to add Martha again. Uh, let's see. Go live with Martha. Accept it, Martha. Let's see. It says it's waiting. It's waiting. Oh, 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 I think. Hi! We, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm too old for this. <laughs> Listen, you and me both. This is, during this whole thing, this is the most times that I've been on live. Like, so this is a whole new experience for me, too. Okay, good. <laughs> Good, because I was like, wait, what's live? I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm uh, quarantined with a six-year-old. So how would you be? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure she's keeping you very entertained because based on the videos that you post, like, yeah. she is a very entertaining girl. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. And homeschooling? <laughs> me? Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. Before, it's it's before. a good thing she's naturally smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, that was on my list of things to talk about. We'll talk about it now. Like, as a parent, <laughs> suddenly being, like, quarantined with your mm -hmm. kid, like, how has that been <laughs> for you? I'm sure it's been very interesting. Well, here's the thing. She's actually done a lot better than I would have expected her to do. And I yeah. think we're all, you know, I work from home most of the time, and so does my husband. So it's yeah. not that different for us. It's just, um, you know, I feel bad for her because she misses her friends and she misses her school. But yeah. um, her her school is so awesome. Um, and her teacher, you know, sends videos, you know, every day and mm -hmm. has become pen pals with her. So they're, like, writing snail oh. mail letters back and forth and yeah. I mean, we, 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 you know, we moved back to Texas for the schools and they totally yeah. delivered. So, it's oh, good. Good. <laughs> yeah. What type of fun things have y'all been doing to <laughs> keep yourselves entertained while you've been quarantined? <sighs> My, we, we're trying to stay on some kind of a schedule, not really yeah. working out, but, um, <laughs> I, I have made Charlie uh, an avid runner, and so we go running at the track every day to get her to burn off some of that extra energy. Um, yeah. And they, my husband and and Charlie have been cooking, um, so oh. I am trying not to eat everything that they're cooking. <laughs> but um, you know, because I I have hopes that I'll come out of this quarantine with some some work. Um, yeah, I'd like to stay. 
thin, thin ish. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's I'm hard gonna, though. It's I'm so hard. I'm going to need some therapy after all this. I know that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and AJ and I, um, you know, we're, we're in the restaurant business and this is the yeah. hardest hit. I think one of the hardest hit industries from all of this. And so, um, you know, I've been a hospitality recruiter for the last three years and, and all of our mm -hmm. clients are on a hiring freeze. So, um, yeah. and our restaurant here in Dallas, that thank God had not opened yet. Um, yeah. uh, we're kind of waiting to see how that's going to go, you know, if we open or how we, you know, what, if we have to kind of, reconcept the space to to be you know suitable for whatever it's going to be after this um, yeah. and so we we kind of have a lot of time on our hands and we have um you know instead of screaming at the tv every day about all the things that they're they're missing the point on we decided to start a podcast so we uh, yes. aj and i started a podcast called while we were waiting um yes. it's a re restaurant focused podcast and um you know, because us restaurant folk have some of the best stories ever, and we felt like this yes. might be a fun time to tell those stories and remind each other why we love the restaurant industry. <laughs> so, well, you, you, you've been in the in the restaurant industry like I mean, my whole life. Since, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and I remember one of the first restaurants that you took me to uh, was Luna Park that mm -hmm. uh, that this AJ had. Our AJ restaurant. had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So um, we had Luna Park in San Francisco, Luna Park in Los Angeles, and Henry yeah. Pat in Los Angeles, and um, a Luna Park in New York, and um, and then a very short-lived, terrible, defunct restaurant experience in LA called Pata Salada, which you can probably yeah. still drive by and see the sign because it I did. And nobody else has been in there since. <laughs> um, I did the other day. I had a. I had a. a like a shoot near, like in the in the building oh, attached. The to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, look, the sign is still up." <laughs> oh, look! I bet the trash is still inside too. Probably. Yeah. yeah. It probably stinks. <laughs> <laughs> out of out of those three, which were your your favorite? Because I was just talking to my friend James, who's probably in the chat yeah. now. Aww, and um, James. Hi. there he is, right there. He um, said the time's like, still up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. um, which, Luna Park, Henry's Hat, um, Pata Salada, which three were your, your favorite? Well, Luna Park LA was where I met AJ. Um, I opened that mm -hmm. restaurant. Um, he obviously owned it, and I did not. And I dated the boss, and here we are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> here we are. What is that? 17 years later. Um, yeah. So I obviously have a lot of love for that restaurant, and I probably worked there the longest. Although mm -hmm. Henry's Hat was my restaurant. That was the one that I had wanted to open for a very long time. And, um, but we had a lot of trouble getting that place open for a, a myriad of reasons I won't get into. But um, yeah. So it was probably the hardest one that we did. But I think it was the one that at least my friends liked the most. And it was it was so fun. Favorite. Yeah, it yeah. was just that it was meant to be a good time. It was meant to be yeah. a, meet, a meeting place for everyone to like get together and hang out and have some drinks. And, and that's exactly what it became. And that's why I loved it so much. Um, if we yeah. didn't have so many hard times kind of getting it open, we probably never would have sold it. But um, yeah, we had, to, we had to cut our losses and move on. I know I was I was so sad because it was really one of my favorite restaurants. I mean, aside from the fact that I knew the owner, um, <laughs> I had <laughs> <laughs> I had a, I had a lot of my events there. I remember having my one year anniversary of living in LA. There, I yes. think I had my premiere party for Lounging with Tony, uh, which mm -hmm. you were the first guest on. See, what people I don't know. realize, we we go back like more than ten years at mm -hmm. this point, and yeah. literally, every, like when I created Lounging with Tony, I was like, "Listen, Martha, I have this idea for this show that I want to do. Will you do it?" And you were just like. Yeah, let's of do course. it. And, and it's like every, because my mind is always like doing stuff. And every time I call you to do something, you're like, yeah, sure, let's yeah. do it. <laughs> because you're always so fun. I mean, I literally, I met you on the dance floor. How can oh. you not be my best friend after that? <laughs> I, like, 
I, I feel like, okay, so th for those of you who haven't heard the story, uh, Martha and I met at a Days of Our Lives uh, soap event in Greenville, mm -hmm. South Carolina. And yeah, like 2005, I think. Yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Was it 2005? Yeah, five or six, somewhere around there. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. And we still um, look so young. We do. We look the same. <laughs> we look the same. Um, but I remember, like, the there there was always a dance and that was my point where I was just like I really don't care about the stars anymore like I've gotten your picture I've gotten your autograph I'm good I'm about to hit the dance floor and then you were on there and I was like wait a minute there's someone else that can five six seven eight one me and like ever since then it was our thing every year that you came we would like eye each other on the dance floor like yep it's about to Still go there. Baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have pictures of us um, somewhere and somewhere. I'll find them. But we are like head cocked and like. <laughs> oh my. There's, there's one of us. I was a sweaty mess. Like I was drenched in sweat. And, but it's the cutest like action photo. And like you're looking one way, I'm looking the other. We're like bumping, but we are like in it and sweating. One of these days, Tony, we're gonna make a music video. It's gonna happen. Oh yeah, yeah, and it's gonna be the best. <laughs> thing. You know who's gonna direct it, Charlie? Huh. Yes. <laughs> no, mommy. I said like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, My okay, eyes so are watering so bad right now. Oh, uh, what? So, um, before we get into the more of the restaurant stuff, you know, for mm -hmm. our days fans, we have yeah. to discuss that just a little bit. Um, I was happy to see you back on the canvas through the dual app for the last mm -hmm. last reunion, um, which were they were some of my favorite years. I know you were kind of like post that like high school time, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but yeah, we it was just great to like see everyone back together. Um, yeah. What did, it, what did it feel like for you to get that call to A, come back for it, and then B, realize it was for the app? Well, I, I mean, I had known that they wanted to do something for the app. Greg had told me a few times, we really want to get you guys doing something on the app. We want to get the, you know, and so uh, I knew that there was interest there. Um, when they called to say what they were going to do, I was super excited because I was like, finally, yes, we're finally going to get the like I've been saying this forever like you got to get wake up Jan just wake her up <laughs> you know they're like we don't know how to write for you I'm like wake up Jan there's lots yeah. of story there so I was so excited that they did and it was so good to see Heather again and Jay and you know I was sad that Farrah wasn't there but you know Ter yeah. Teresa or Teresa was so great and jumped right in and um, yeah. Chadwick Hobson who I just love him I I this is my plea. If anyone at Days is watching, we need to get Chadwick on because he's the funniest guy I've ever met, and I think that he would be awesome. So there's Agreed. a pitch for that. Yes. Um, he's like my new BFF. We talk all the time. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, everyone was just super great. And, of course, Brandon, who I see all the time and love and talk to him yeah. all the time. So <laughs> it was just fun to what, be together. Yeah. What was your thought to the, to the storyline? Because I don't – because it's – it's weird because we were happy to see it back, and then it oh Chadwick is here. Hi Chadwick. Oh, hey, <laughs> um, hi. Love you too. <laughs> um, it was we were happy to see everyone back, but then like the first death happened, and we were like, "Wait, are right. they? They're gonna they kill?" They didn't. Right. Everyone? They didn't prep any of us as to what they yeah. were doing. So um, I remember I got like all of the. I got the first few scripts delivered to my house. And before I had read them, Brandon texted me and he was like, they're killing Nadia. And I was like, no, they're not. And he was like, yeah. in the script, I was like, there's no way that anyone would kill Nadia's character in an app. Like, it's no right. way. I said, call me after you've read the next three, right? So then he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a dream. It's a dream or something. But we didn't actually know until the very end what it actually yeah. was. And so we were, you know, we were figuring it out as we were getting the script. Um, because so the, fan, the fans, like, we were all like, like, I mean, unfortunately, with, with Chadwick's uh, character, Kevin, uh, yep. when they killed mm -hmm. him, we were all like, oh. And then right. when they killed him. <laughs> because they're like, Kevin, <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Oh. 
Poor thing. Sorry, Tabby. Sorry, Tabby. Uh, but, but then when they killed Chloe, Nadia, we were all like, wait, we know that you're not right. going to kill off Chloe on an app. And there were, I mean, the fans were in an uproar. And I know that there were a couple of uh, times where you tweeted uh, something back. We were all just kind of like, this isn't <laughs> happening, right? Like, this is crazy. <laughs> But we were well, all I just into figured it. everyone would have the same reaction I did. Like, whatever. <laughs> this is a dream. It's not real. Like, it would have mean it would have made more sense if it was like my character, right? And everyone's like, "Wow, they killed Belle. Finally killed her." You know? <laughs> no. Listen, I I have always, and not because I adore you, but I enjoy the character of Belle. I wish yeah. that she was on the. Show. Well, remember when I started Dish and Days? I started the hashtag Bring Belle Back. Um, and like for for a second, well now Bell does pop ins. So like whenever they need a good lawyer and Justin isn't available, right. here comes Bell. <laughs> it's one of the best things that um Josh Griffith ever did for me, right? Is make me a lawyer. You always wanna be like the lawyer or the doctor or the you know, the the unkillable villain because you'll always be able to pop in and out. Like you're yeah. always gonna be needed at some point, right? Yeah. It's like it's like these long flights to Hong Kong, from Hong Kong, and you're like, I'm here, right. and then it's like, case wrapped up, gotta right. go back to Hong Kong. <laughs> I have enough frequent flyer miles to fly first class now, so it's not so bad. <laughs> but but I, you, Belle is a very lovable character on the show, and I, yeah. I think we all wish that she was on the campus more, you know, mm -hmm. especially, we're not even gonna get into all the stuff that's happening now, but we're like, <laughs> We need Belle, like, where is uh, she? So, so don't, don't think that you're not, you're just a throwaway character. You're an amazing character, and I, I have. I'm, I'm good, I, you know, I'm, I'm Marlena's daughter. I play Marlena's daughter, I'm good. Exactly. <laughs> and Once I, a year, I mean, 100 I, times a year, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've enjoyed you since day one, since I still remember when you first came on the show. Um, and I've talked about this with you um <laughs> i all i will say is thank god for you oh, well, <laughs> because you, you know, <laughs> thank god i was too stupid to know at the time that it was going to be like a that there would be a backlash i just i didn't realize i had no idea that you know people were going to be pissed that i wasn't <laughs> the original <laughs> bell just thought we would just move on well yeah. you know well it's it's so so like whenever you get used to, you know, a certain person playing a character and then things happen that we're not aware of. And then, you know, here you are with this chance and opportunity and, you know, a lover of the show as well. And now you're like on the show and you have people going, who is she? And it's like, <laughs> settle. Like, and, and I think, I think after a while, everyone just, you know, they were yeah, like, they just realized oh. I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm going to stay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that, that you stuck around. You're, you're amazing. You're super talented. And I really felt like we saw that during the whole Marlena resuscitation thing, uh, storyline. Oh, um, I, I felt like they gave you some great material to work with and some they material did. to show, like, what a dynamic actress you are. And like, you know, you took us on this journey of this is Marlena and like, she's never been in this position before. It's always been John. And it's like, you know, <laughs> no. Belle has to be, you know, the, the, the person to, you know, follow these orders and, and, you know, look at John. And it's, it was so much and it was so good. And like right. that storyline never would have happened if you weren't as talented as you are. Well, that's a very nice of you to say, but I do have to put the credit where it's due. And, and it really was with the writers that they wrote a, a completely full family, you know, story. And everyone yeah. was there. Um, you know, I felt like for the most part, aside from like Christy, who just couldn't be there, I, um, I felt like everyone in the family was there. It made it very realistic. I felt mm -hmm. like the, the subject matter was something that I think people deal with on a, on a, not rare basis and and yeah. for me personally it was something that i was personally going through at the time too so yeah. it, it hit home with me so i think yeah. you know all those things combined it's 
every once in a while on SOAP, you get those special moments where you get to have, you know, something to really do that you know is going to resonate with people. So you like take it really serious. You know, like, yeah. I know that this could, this could like really touch people. And so I wanted it to, to do my best and everybody brought their game. So. Well, you, yeah. you definitely did. And I, I think the the most memorable uh, scenes are definitely with uh, you and Drake. Like, those yeah. scenes were just... He was so wow. good in that. Wow. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. Was fun to, it was fun. To, I always love working with Drake, but that was, a, yeah. that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now that we've talked about days, okay. y'all, um, <laughs> let's talk more about the, the restaurant biz and, and mm -hmm. where where are you because you, you just mentioned uh the new restaurant that you guys have in texas the mayor's yes, house it's called the mayor's house and it will yes. open at some where, point i don't know when where are you in the like is it like all set and just waiting to be open or that's yeah so we have been we thought we were going to be able to open last fall and mm -hmm. the thing is is that this is a it's a over a 120 year old house, like a residence that used to be the mayor of Oak Cliff's house. Um, and they had to, re you know, restore the property, but then also have it zoned to become a restaurant. And so that process takes a really long time. Um, and, you know, I, since September, I have just been humming and hawing about all the delays and why can't we get all the inspections done and blah, 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 blah. And now I'm like, thank you, God, for all the delays. <laughs> like, I'm going to be one of the lucky few, I think, that, you know, may still be able to have a restaurant after this. And um, yeah. so for that, I'm very grateful. But yeah, I mean, the kitchen's built, the the equipment's in the gas is on the bar is built it's it's ready to go um we have one more inspection that was our final inspection um that we were supposed to get right before all of the closures happened so um i think once everything kind of gets back going we'll get that last inspection passed and and hopefully get staffed and get open i don't know now to what i don't i don't know if we'll stick with our original full service um, concept or if we may have to make some tweaks to make it palatable to you know the new world we're gonna all walk out on to <laughs> so yeah we just yeah. a lot of it is about you know coming up with some contingency plans and then waiting and, and seeing we really don't know yeah. with with all of your your years experience of working in the restaurant and knowing uh, like what how this is going to impact a lot of restaurants what suggestions or tips uh, do you have um, for people to, during this, you know, to continue to support, like, their local restaurants? Right. <clears throat> well, I think there's a few things that you can do. And I love seeing that a lot of people are buying gift certificates and, um, you know, knowing that you're going to go back to these places at some point, buying your gift certificates now is a great way to support them now while they need it most. Um, yeah. You know, I, I love that that people want to do takeout and things like that. I don't particularly know how safe that is. So I don't know <laughs> that I really recommend that. Honestly, I think that we're learning yeah. that, that the virus can live on inanimate objects and, and not everyone who's delivering your takeout is someone who's passed food safety courses and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I, I think that I'd be a little concerned about that, but um, I think the best thing that you can do right now, honestly, is to write your local representative, um, you know, at the the state and federal level, call your senators, call your congressmen, call your governors, and tell them to continue, as they keep rolling out these new stimulus items, to continue to support the restaurant industry. Um, yeah. It's really easy to say, you know, we have to bail out the banks, or we have to bail out the airlines, or these giant corporations and but I think what people are finally learning this thing I've always known is that mm -hmm. you know 15 percent of our uh, or 15 million people in this country work in food and beverage and that's just yeah. in in restaurants and food service we're not even talking about farmers and delivery drivers and truck drivers yeah. and all the things you know this is a trickle down issue and it's going to affect the people that have built this country <laughs> you know built yeah small business and um so i i think that we really have to continue to to put pressure on our representatives to to do the work it's going to take to support us from the ground up yeah and you know for for someone like you who has literally been through 
<laughs> many of the jobs. Um, <laughs> the I've done them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was a dishwasher once upon a time. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, <I> <laughs> what, what advice would you give to, to those in the, the service industry right now that maybe they don't know what to do, what they're going to come back to? Like, what piece of advice um, can you give them? Well, I, you know, if you uh, go, I, I don't know how many of your viewers have LinkedIn profiles, but um, on my LinkedIn profile, I posted and will continue to post a bulletin today about the CARES Act that was just passed and how you can file for um, unemployment, how you can get the extra money that they're giving to um, gig workers, independent contractors, and restaurant workers. <clears throat> um, and to the small businesses that that um, employ them. So there are a lot of different ways, although it's it's all, you know, hard to read. We're trying to make it very easy to read, but I'll post that up and um, I'll post it on my links. I mean, here on my Instagram as well. Um, so you can kind of read about how to do that. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, you know, like I said, keep writing your representatives and, and stay home, you know, the, the yes. Yeah. The longer we are, the, the more that we stay isolated and, and, you know, quarantined, the faster this will go. So, yeah. you know, I, I, nobody wants to get out and party more than I do. But I also know that if I lock myself <laughs> down and I make my family lock themselves down, I'm doing my part yeah. to make this go faster. Exactly. Now, uh, you're a creative, just, just like I am. And while doing this, you mentioned uh, you and AJ started a podcast called While mm -hmm. We Were Waiting. Right. Um, with, uh, what, what are your, what's your best and worst restaurant story? Oh my gosh. Well, the, the restaurant story that I tell all the time is actually on episode two, which you can get uh -huh. on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and Stitcher while we were waiting. Um, uh, but it's a celebrity story. So I worked at this place, this crazy place on the up, uh, Upper East Side in New York years ago called Jimmy's Downtown. And it was always just flooded with celebrities. Um, so I tell a really funny story about how when I was making a, a cocktail for Martha Stewart, <laughs> I almost <laughs> knocked myself out with my shaker by hitting myself so hard in the head in front of Martha Stewart. So there's <clears throat> there's more to that story. You can check it out there. But um, I have so many. And I think that's why we decided to make this podcast. Anyone who's worked in a restaurant for any length of time has stories. Um, yeah. And we're, we're going to make our way through all of them. So yeah. um, it's something fun to do while we were waiting to go back to work. Um, telling <laughs> stories about while we were waiting tables in the restaurant. So. And, and you're always looking for people to be a part of it, right? So if they yeah. if they want to like want to, uh, share their story, story with you. yeah, uh, you can go onto our website while we were waiting podcast dot com, um, and I, I think there's a link on there to email us. But you can also just email us at stories at while we were waiting podcast dot com. We have a list of themes we're working through, and if you have a great story, you know, tell us uh, why you think it's a great story and what it means. Uh, to you now that we're all at home quarantined and, and we will reach out and get you on. Yeah, I I never worked in a restaurant only because I don't think I would be good at it. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I always look at, like, whenever I go out to eat and I look at my waiters, I'm that customer that looks at them and goes, I'm so sorry because I feel like I'm going to be that guy. <laughs> like when I order, I'm always like, okay, I want this, but not this. Can you add this? Can I, can we, can you bring this out before the, like I'm that person, but mm -hmm. I do tip. I do tip, which is That's okay. Very yeah. yeah. And the whole point but, of hospitality is to say yes as much as you can and, and make people feel welcome and comfortable there yeah. and, so that's part of the job. Um, but I think anyone who's been in restaurants for any length of time, uh, especially managing them, uh, is really good at crisis management. <laughs> you know, I think yeah. that every day is a crisis. This isn't the first crisis the restaurant industry has faced, and it certainly won't be the last. And I think that we're yeah. actually the most prepared to deal with it. So <laughs> yeah. if you haven't worked in restaurants, good for you. <laughs> we'll take care of you. <laughs> But let, let me tell you, I love eating at restaurants. I, I enjoy it thoroughly. But I just know that I would never be great at working with one. Like, I could never. When I moved here, people were like, oh, be prepared to be a waiter. And I was like, I can't do that. I'll be the person that's like, 
write your stuff down and then go, okay, wait, what was that? Or they'll say something and I'll, and I'll go, oh, that's on the menu? Never knew that. And then, <laughs> I'd be yeah, why don't you just stick to your day job, Tony? Yeah. <laughs> There's a place for everyone. <laughs> this is true. My place is being a customer. I am great and fantastic. Years of experience with that. <laughs> Perfect. So when uh, this is all over, I expect you and all of your viewers and everyone you can get this in front of to go out immediately and spend some money in your local restaurants. That's the best thing you can do. And do it immediately yes. when we get the green light. Listen, I have a list of places that I plan on going to. So, and I'm saving all of my calories now, so that way <laughs> I can <Good. laughs> I can go visit all. I'm of these not. <laughs> You'll have to like grease me through the door after this. <laughs> <laughs> well, Martha, thank you so much for for doing this and for checking in with everyone and. I hope that when this is all over, that the mayor's house is going to open, people are going to flood in there, and Thank it's going to be hugely and wildly successful. And whenever I make it out to Texas at some point in life, I'm coming back. <laughs> you will have to come out here. And I see that Diedrich Bonner is in the room, and Diedrich used to run Henry's hat. Hi, Diedrich! Oh, I love Diedrich. <laughs> Let me tell you, Diedrich is like, such a talent, amazing. so amazing, and like stays booked. Like he's That's always right. in or doing something. Like I absolutely adore him. He's and like I, our, our best manager at Henry's Hat, and the reason why we had so many regulars. So. The, and I told him that one day I'm coming to his house with a garbage bag to collect all of his fashion because <laughs> when he dresses. <laughs> It's like He's always been a sharp dresser, always. Right? <laughs> I'm I'm coming I'm coming to steal everything once this is over. <laughs> I wanna see a picture of his Fedora collection. <laughs> oh, that that in itself is a collection. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right. All right, well have fun, Martha, and I'm thank you. I'll bug you again soon. Tell the family I said hi and I can't wait I to see a new post from Charlie so that she can educate me on the things that I forgot in school. <laughs> oh, it's coming. And don't forget to give us a follow on Instagram at waiting podcast at waiting podcast. Yes, new episode guys... goes up live tonight. Yes. Oh, new episode tonight. Oh, well, good and... too. <laughs> okay, good. I'm going to check it out. Okay, great. Bye. Right. Thank you. Bye, Bye Martha. Yay! All right. I absolutely love catching up with Martha. Um, again, you guys, make sure you support her. Um, go listen to her new podcast with her and her husband, AJ, uh, while we were waiting on Spotify, Stitcher, uh, Google Play, um, anywhere where podcasts can be found. Go find it. Go support it. Go listen to it. And also take a look at her um Instagram, uh, where she'll be posting uh, information for those of you who work in the restaurant industry. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll be back at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time with Christina Grady, who is a dancer for Lady Gaga. So all of you monsters, make sure you tune in. Thanks for joining me, everybody. This has been another episode of Tell Me More with Tony Moore. Bye, y'all.